Okay, I'm Damon and I am one of the luckiest people on this earth at this moment because I'm sitting with two wonderful, wonderful accomplished actresses, Louise Sorrell and Peggy McKay. It's such an honor to see both oh, of you today. Uh, it's so great to see you. So, first of all, for you, for being gone from days for all these years, Louise, and coming back, how have the fans been greeting you today? What's this been like for you to be here? Um, they waved a lot. <laughs> they said, welcome back. It's very nice to hear. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's sort of taken me by surprise, and, and it's very nice, you know, rather than saying, what are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> I saw something on the internet, you know, I, I made the mistake, because they're very, very ferocious, our oh, fans yeah. on the show. Yeah. They say what they think, and I saw something on there about, oh, well, I guess they'll be bringing back, you know, it was sort of like digging people up from the past, to, you know, it was a sort of a... A little slam, and I thought I don't need to read this. You know, it's like you know, but that's okay. They get to feel the way they want. But most of them, everybody's been very welcoming and very nice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Now, did, did when you were, you know, Vivian, as we know, does some pretty nasty things. Do fans at these events ever have a hard time blurring the lines between reality and fantasy? Do they ever come at you personally because of Vivian's actions? Nah. Nah, do they get it? <laughs> <laughs> they don't say mean things to you or personal things to you. Oh, you mean the fan? Do the fans ever mis no. confuse reality with fantasy and direct oh, it towards you? No. That has happened, and it happened to an actress uh, that I know who was hit across the face. <gasps> With no a woman way. who was wearing a ring at oh Saks Fifth Avenue or someplace like that in New York City, a woman just called her a bitch or something and slapped her across Who the face. Who was that? A, I, I don't know if I would say, happened. but oh. uh, anyway, oh. you know, no. Oddly enough, you know, there's certain, uh, I think, certain types of characters, even if they're mean or whatever, that people don't want to tangle with, you know, they don't want, they're a little uncomfortable about the idea of coming at them, and I don't really invite that kind of attack. Mm -hmm. So usually I get, a, even with what I do, they don't seem to mind. I know, had a fan in New York when I did a so, and I had 500 letters a week, and I didn't know it because they never told, but I answered, I would sit there and get them and answer them, and they're very mean to me, and they didn't want to pay me, And it was, but I was really popular. So, uh, what was I going to say? It was about fans doing things? Our oh, fans, yeah. 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 Well, fans. I got a lot of fan letters. I would send a little uh, note back, a <laughs> small button, and this girl sent me a letter and said she was having a baby and she was going to name it after Vanessa and would I pay the hospital bill? <laughs> and I went, wait a minute. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the truth. And I've had letters in that time where they believed it was real. And they would warn me so and so was coming. You know, they believed the story was that's real. True. They do that. They do right. And that's kind of And which amazing. show was that? Were, were you that, on was that was Love of yeah, Life. That was Love of Life. That's right. It was really funny. Well, I, okay, you just reminded me of something. This is absolutely unbelievable. When I was on Santa Barbara, there was a period where I, I mean, I, not to make fun of it, but it, with the way it was set up, I went blind, or you know, a retina, dis something happened, and I was supposedly blind. And it was a very funny stuff they wrote with Ronnie Shell and Nick Coster and myself. However, I actually got a letter from the White House, what? from the Reagans, really? who, who wrote to say how sorry they were for my blindness. And I was so stunned that I, I actually gave it to NBC. Oh my God. And the there was a bit of a... Seriously. Yes. There was... God. Hello? There was a bit of a reaction from the White House when they read it because I put it out. I couldn't resist. I gave it to NBC or something and they printed it out in the papers or something. That, that this. Did you say that? I didn't say anything. I just gave them... I just said, do you believe? And I, I put it out there. Yeah, so I didn't I write it. I this letter that believes I the real person was well it, I, I couldn't believe I had that for a long time and I, I don't know what happened to it isn't, isn't that, that great yeah, yeah. <laughs> priceless now what kind of reactions do you get at these events I imagine they must be very very loving and positive but well they're very happy to be here for one yeah. thing and the enthusiasm they have about it says to you listen there are real people out there we're not just in this studio with cameras they're real people are watching the story and, and they all come out. I mean, some of them came from Australia for just this. Canada for just this. And I went, wow, they must really like us. 
You know, they must. So it's kind of nice. It's uplifting, so supportive. I, I enjoy seeing them, and I think I do. I do. Do people ever mistake you for Caroline? Do they ever assume they you're this Caroline. unconditional maternal oh figure? When I came on the show, they gave me a dress. It was crepe, dark blue crepe with pleats, and a crocheted collar, and a cameo. And I said to the Lord, man, uh, uh, is that for me? He said, yeah. I said, is that how my character is? Yes. I said, oh, no. Oh, no, that's not me. That is not Caroline. I went, and they keep trying to make me Betty Crocker. And I said, it just isn't good. I don't think this is good. Mm -hmm. So I bought them. I said, let me buy my own wardrobe. Okay. <laughs> that's what I did. I could that image, is Betty Crocker, is so... There's a funny cartoon where there's a Betty Crocker with a picture of her below. And she said, get your ass over and sell those cakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great well, cartoon. Like there's no angel. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> now, you two seem like you're pretty good friends. Well, we like yeah, each other. Yeah, we never seen each other. Yeah. No, I tried. I talked to you in the phone a couple of times. Yeah. I called uh -huh. you up this yeah. year. It's rare that I call. I call uh, Greg Holmesson. I call mm -hmm. Deirdre sometimes. How you doing? I, we go, mm -hmm. I don't know. You work so long. I interviewed I feel Patsy so Pease recently about too. That. I really feel bad about yeah. what happened. About. But, yeah. DJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a big shock. I do, maybe they'll do one of those things and back they come, you know. I died and was resurrected. Twice. Well, one time, our friend Vivian poisoned Caroline and pretty much uh, brought her to her death. You did that to me? Yes. <laughs> okay, so here's where we go. In 1993, in 1993, when Vivian started playing with those Chinese herbs, she uh, put, she brought Caroline this close to death. Caroline was in a coma, and um, Vivian had poisoned her. Well, I don't remember why, but she did. Before she, before she went after Carly and the grave, she uh, put Caroline. in <laughs> <laughs> a little Namenda to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how goofy I am. <laughs> yeah, Caroline came very close to dying. Very, very close to dying. Yes. I purposely poisoned you? Yes. Well, Vivian did. You were running around doing but she was nice things like She was hopped up on Chinese herbs, so she didn't exactly, you know, she also buried Carly, so. I remember that, but I didn't know yeah. poisoning you. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> There was a thing where Marlena was considered the serial killer of yes. Salem. And we had Frances back on the show in the middle of a murder plot. And she, so she came in and she was to answer the phone and say, Marlena is the serial killer. And Frances said, Marlena is the silly killer. <laughs> just so pretty. <laughs> that was so funny. We you know, take a break. <laughs> and it's, that's the truth. She was so cute. You just lost it or something? Well, she's, she had a bad stroke. And that's hard, you know. Yeah. But it was it's one of my favorite moments. Marlena is the silly killer. <laughs> I'm sure everyone busted up on that one. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you, Luis, if you could describe Peggy in five words, what would those be? Absolutely adorable and full of love. That's probably six words. So that's beautiful. That's five or six words. How about you? Describe Luis in five words. Chic, elegant, and smart. That's beautiful. Sharp. <laughs> sharp. And too. very sharp. Knows humor extremely well. She sure does. She does. She sure does. That's true. <laughs> Wow. So so it's so great to see both of you on the show. Um, Days of Our Lives is the only show this past year to actually be, to raise in the ratings. And that's awesome. I think that really adds to the morale today. Being on the show for as long as you have, what do you think has led to the rise in ratings this past year? Well, I think it's the writers, the head writer returned to the show. People she got to write have, has changed some of the quality of the show in between, you know, all these years. And, and uh, our new producer, Gary, is devoted to the show. We had a very good producer, James Scott, from uh, 
Yes. Young and the Restless. Well, I don't know why he did that. It's Scott. It's Scott. It's Scott. That's what it is. And, and I don't know why, he did, why he's no longer here. He was doing a good job, but I don't know. Politics. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. But I'm so happy yeah. that Gary's wonderful.